Yeah, so what's up, everybody? Welcome to another yet special edition of Wednesday here on ChronoSpeakEasy.com. I'm Paul. This is Angela. And we got Hi. Rob. Hello. And Jay. Hi. And we're <laughs> Team Good Times. Yeah. And this is Wednesday. Wait, where's Domino? She is sleeping under the chairs. Yeah, she, uh, yeah, she, yeah, she was having a diva moment. sweet time. So she was like, fuck you guys, I'm taking it out. I mean, I can get sent here in the background, I guess, but mm, that'd require me to get up and, you know, do stuff. Yeah. Doing stuff is pretty yeah, long. She's, she's sleeping. I hope she's not chewing on anything. <laughs> oh, she is. People oh, who shit. are watching and listening <laughs> don't know if they're talking about a human on? or a dog right now. Oh, it could be both. <laughs> if you're a fan be. of Full Metal Alchemist. What you doing? A dog? Human? <clears throat> You haven't seen that episode? Maybe it was just the chair. I've maybe seen one episode <laughs> of that fall show. All over. She's like chewing the oh, leg. Yeah. So <laughs> there's an episode of Full Metal Alchemist where a dude combines his daughter with their family dog, and then it's just like, oh, and it's the saddest that thing. Sounds that like, horrifying. Still messes people up to this day. That sounds hilarious. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> <laughs> you guys had like Angela, you had to have seen Full Metal Alchemist, right? I actually didn't stick with it. Really? It was like yeah. episode six. Is yeah. that when they're in Vietnam? <laughs> no. No, no, I didn't know. That's, that's uh, Mash. Big Mama's Oh, Sister. Mash. Got it. Yeah, I just, I didn't, I mean, I watched the first few episodes and I was like, oh, and then like if it was on, I'd like sit through it, but I never really kind of got hooked. Hmm. Sorry. Right. I know a lot of people don't know that. Cool. I, you, you know, you think you know someone. <laughs> But you, know, <laughs> you learn something new. It happens. I think that came out right Joe. after I kind of fell off the tsunami bandwagon. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, I think I just aged. I, I kind of, I don't know, because this what what year was this? Like two two thousand. It's probably mid two thousand ish. Yeah. Yeah, like two thousand two thousand one. Like, I started like you know having sex and like living <laughs> in two thousand one. Yeah, those those yeah, go hand in hand. Man, I think I priced. I don't. Well, two thousand one. I think so I would have been sixteen. I went hard into video games. Sixteen. <laughs> yeah, I, I went awesome. harder into anime. Sixteen. I, I turned eight, <laughs> eighteen in two thousand three. Started having sex. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like when I started having sex, I still watched anime. I did, I did. You were but watching think, anime while having sex, but it wasn't like Goku. No, because I remember when this is the second um, podcast that started with a similar conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no, because when I when I this is the first one that like has around, a video recording of it. Around two thousand one. Sorry, mom. <laughs> no, no. Around two thousand one, I was still watching anime. I watched, um, but I watched like weird things, and um, I remember finding the box set for the first time they had the Sa it said Sailor Moon the unedited version on the DVDs and I saw the Best Buy and I spent all my money and I like marathoned it really high in my room mm. for like days mm. <laughs> it was awesome mm. <laughs> so I was I was still like you know but then I there were some like I watched like Orphan Lead Lead Orphan Orphan Lead, Lead. F yeah that one no an, or an Orphan yeah. there was an actual show called Orphan and I watched that um, I don't know that but yeah, one. Yeah, I think once, uh, one, by the time Full Metal Alchemist was on, I was kind of like I kind of dipped out. So I think it was later actually than I think 2000, it was 2003. It must have been 2003 because at that point I graduated high school. Sorry. Fair enough. So uh, I was like not. Was it either at 2003 home. or 2006? I can't remember which. That was oh, for the first one. That sounds about right because I was in high yeah. school and I was not. I wasn't big into anime in high school. I mean, yeah, the anime I was, was big for me from like fourth grade to eighth grade. Yeah, I was like doing like a couple semesters and like trying to like figure my shit out as an adult. So I wasn't watching a lot of TV at that point. But I'm yeah, I'm still trying to figure my shit out as an adult. Who isn't? Well, little did we all know that we'd all be adults and streaming live on the internet talking about comic I books. I know <laughs> it's all of my dreams coming true. It's pretty pretty yeah, fantastic. Sure. You know, know what? Yeah. One of my other dreams is coming true is that we're getting an unbreakable trilogy. Because I was in when the movie came out, two thousand? Two thousand one? Yeah. Two thousand. I, think it was, I oh, remember everybody ago. shit on it and I loved it. I loved movie. it too. Everyone's like, Well, because you know what it was? Because it was M. Night Shyamalan following the Sixth Sense and everyone 
kind of wanted to get their mind blown in the way that The Sixth Sense did, but I actually thought Unbreakable was a better movie. Me too. Especially because mm-hmm. Bruce Willis, instead of being dead the whole time, he survives shit. Yeah. Twist. That's also, the real twist. The twists in the movie weren't, like, the movie didn't hinge on the twists, if you know, yes. like a lot of his old movies did. Yeah. Unbreakable, I, I came to a little later on DVD because I, like, heard about it. People were like, dude, oh, that's man. a superhero movie. And I was like, what? See, yeah. <laughs> I saw that in theaters knowing that, like, there was some comic bookiness to it, but I didn't know how. But I love that opening, like, title card of, like, how many comic books are sold within a year and, like, how many comics a person will read within their lifetime. And I was like, this is made for me. And I have so many comics to go. <laughs> so, so many. Um, no, I loved it. I thought it was, it was, I, I mean... Samuel Jackson was awesome. I felt like that was the first time I'd seen Samuel L. Jackson in a role where he wasn't playing Samuel L. Jackson as so and so. You know what I mean? Like he, so he, wasn't he kind of. Yeah, yeah. He was. He was like a. He was an entirely new character, and I He's more vulnerable than any. Time so I've vulnerable, ever seen him. and I, I just adore like that whole sequence of him in the comic shop, just kind of having a hissy fit, was so cringy and uncomfortable, and I adored it. But I did like. Like the sense of power that he had that was so different than other Samuel Jackson roles. Like when he's giving this whole presentation about this comic book in a store, which, by the way, is such a great name, limited edition. Mm. Um, he's like, oh, I'll take it. You know, my son, Jeb, will love it. And he's like, how old is your son? <laughs> oh, three and a half. And he's like, and he's just like, oh, I'm sorry. Does this look like a Walmart? Does it, do you see like a, like a small Asian child with a half place <laughs> look on his face riding like, a, like a mechanical rocket ship out front? <laughs> Get your ass out of here. Yeah. I, that, yep. He and, was the yeah. condescending comic book nerd. Everybody loves. <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember thinking that's what I want to be when I grow up. That's kind of what I did for like nine years. I want like a. That's like I, I just, just I like just, uh, the all ages shelf is over there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, while sporting like a Frederick Dull- uh, Douglas haircut. <laughs> exactly. Like the like that he has in the movie. It'd be it'd be great. So yeah, and I love that, you know, like you know, like some were saying that they didn't know they're watching a comic book movie. And the great thing about Split was not only did you not know that you were witnessing like a supervillain origin movie, but you were witnessing a sequel to Unbreakable. Mm-hmm. And uh, I I just can't wait to see what's in store for Glass. Um, you know, and I remember when I was a kid hearing that M Night wanted to do a trilogy. I had heard there was going to be Unbreakable, Breakable broken and i was like that's so cool <laughs> but i'm glad unbreakable split and glass I, I, those titles because yeah. i remember when we saw Bru- when we were walking out of the theater and i was like split unbreakable <laughs> my mind was split into. having not great. seen unbreakable or split i remember wanting to see split because it looked neat uh split i have to and- say Oh, sorry. I won't. I was just gonna say you. after watch, watching the the trailer for Glass, it makes me want to watch the movies. And you it, should, if anything, I'm pretty hyped for it. If anything, even if you haven't seen Unbreakable, watch it for James McAvoy. Yeah, so good. His he performance was incredible. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, James McAvoy is amazing. Yeah, in he general, really I is. feel like he nails it in like everything yeah, he does. Yeah, but this was like even wanted above and beyond. I mean, and I like the the actress. The, oh yeah, the girl, the, right? She, the one whose eyes are a little slightly too like far apart. I love her. I love her look. I loved her, her energy. I loved how she tackled the role. I just, I think she's great. And I'll and pretty I, much, I'll, I would love to see her other work. Well, and she I, was great. And I love that she's back for the, um, the sequel. Yes. Um, and I also like that she's uh, coming up in uh, the New Mutants movie, Anya Taylor Joy. Yes, I like her. Oh, and she was in The Witch. She was. In, she was in The Witch, and I actually really enjoyed that movie. Everybody hated it, but I thought it was great. But yeah, she's great. I like her. I like her face. I don't know. It's weird, and I really like it. <laughs> I just I really like, like your sl- weird face. I do. It's so, I know like, that's janky and like off, but no, like it's great. No, it's like her eyes are just too wide <laughs> apart, but like in the best way. Like well, I really she, like her face. She kind of has like a um 
Oh god, I didn't have the way kind of eye thing going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, and it's kind of like turned down a lot. Oh, like, I don't like know, the, there's just something about like her face that I really enjoy. Yeah, so. And you know how important faces are to me, guys. Like, there are faces that will send me, like, running out of a room, and her face does not do that. She makes me happy. She makes me want to stay in the room. She makes me want to stay in the room and listen <laughs> to what she has to say. <laughs> Although, have, have any of you seen VHS, that, like, horror anthology that came out yeah. several yes. years ago? Yes. So, do you know the one that has the girl whose eyes are definitely too far apart? Yes. And Which then, one's like, the... Like, as soon as you see her in the back of the oh. room, you're just like, oh, that she's going to eat someone. The, the very <laughs> yeah. first one, right? The succubus? Yeah, it's like about... Yeah, the succubus one. The one that's just like, I, I like you. Yeah, that one yeah. freaks me the fuck out. Yeah, I you know why? The first VHS is face. so good. <laughs> I love it that because, good. like, every guy... In that anthology, with the um, exception of the cult one at the end, like every guy was such like a douchebag. So to have that be like the first tale mm. with her, like the picking up this chick in a bar, being like, "I like you," and all creepy. I was like, "Oh, she's gonna fucking eat them!" Like I immediately <laughs> saw it, and I was like, "Yeah!" Like, and I rode that wave, and I enjoyed every moment of it. I just remember well, no. watching it, and like. She was in the very, she was like in the way background, and you just see those fucking creepy eyes like staring into the camera from far away, and you're just like, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. God. Oh. There is something <laughs> about creepy doll like women that will destroy a room full of men that I just, I love. I love. Do you remember there was a horror movie forever ago, and it was about that chick who took body parts of people that she liked and created like the perfect man? That? No, 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 no. It was like this really weird chick. Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> that was it. It wasn't an audition. It was an audition. No. She took actual body parts. It wasn't Maya. It was something like that, though. It was just her name, like Faye or something like that. Um, but it was really good. But I like that kind of stuff. I think doll like anything is really creepy <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> I love it. Like, just the creepy chicks that just, like, yeah, I love creepy chicks that are insanely dangerous. It just makes me happy because I always drop them in, like, a super machismo environment, and it's like, oh, man, you guys are all dead because she's crazy. <laughs> Good quote. Angela, very empowering. I love creepy chicks that are really <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> and then Q, everybody get dangerous by Weezer. I don't know that song. No, I don't know. I got nothing. <laughs> well, on Your a turn? less murderous woman note, Warner Brothers kind of knocked it out of the park with their press conference this year, if you ask me. <laughs> Which nobody did, but I was going did to. You, uh, I, yeah, See how I well, turned that around? Let's, yeah, talk, let's talk about Shazam it's real quick, good. because it looks fun. I am so excited for Shazam. Am I? Am I is it Angela not like, excited about Shazam? You, no, it was like pulling teeth just to get me to watch the yes. trailer because I fucking hate Shazam. I've always hated Shazam. Just the idea of Shazam, I'm like, what? I don't know, man. When but, I was a kid, I loved the idea of Shazam. I say magic I, word, I'm a powerful adult. That being said, <laughs> well, I know, I know, and that's that's like the Mine whole would be thing. like, banana hammock! Yeah. If only it worked like that for me right now. But, I mean, that's great Like when you're a kid, but even now. when I was a kid, I just thought that was stupid. I was like, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like him interacting with anybody. I hate his fucking outfit. I hate everything about him. <laughs> but, I know why. I have a theory. But then... But then I saw the Aquaman trailer and was so under, like, impressed and just, like, completely disenchanted to everything. And Paul's like, oh, and they released the Shazam trailer. I'm like, great. This is awesome. Let's pee on this corpse. And then, like, I saw the Shazam trailer and, you know, surprisingly, I was like, huh, not that bad. Do I still want to see it? No. But it didn't want me to, like, I, I, it didn't make me feel like tearing my eyes out after watching it. I don't know. But I, still, I hear Shazam, and I'm just like, oh. I think it. I don't know. I, I think it could be fun. Like, I I think this could be a, a chance where it, it. I think this is gonna break the cycle of dark. Nope. Grizzly. Nope. Because here's the problem. Here's the immediate problem with this trailer. I too thought, oh, this could be fun, and then I realized I'm thinking this could be fun, which means it's not gonna be fun, which means it's gonna be awful because that's what they do. Yeah, that's but I didn't what see they like do. I didn't see like. You know, like a kid smiling and having fun in the Batman vs. Superman trailer. It's like, do you bleed? Hi, Batman! 
goddamn. Like, like so I, yeah, the thing I liked about no. this is that not only did it like just like the whole vibe felt fun and kind of whimsical and stuff, but they were kind of like leaning into the fact that the whole idea of Shazam is really cheesy and my favorite part in the whole trailer is when he's just walking as a kid and he's like Shazam and it's literally just poof and he's a big guy like the <laughs> easiest special effect for anyone in the world to do it's just a puff of cloud and then he's big and I'm just like oh this is so goofy I love it I, yeah I think it checks all the right boxes at least for me anyway and um, he, he looks comic booky too with like the super slicked hair and like overly big muscles for like mm-hmm. how big and his head like, is and shit we've talked about on the show before how like the stills they released looked super dumb with yeah. him and his like muscle suit yeah. and stuff but it looks seeing so it in context dumb. of the movie Still it makes sense dumb. because oh but it's supposed <laughs> to kind of look dumb i think because he looks it, so cheesy he looks so but it works so bad i do like the tigers on his little buttons this is this is the superhero movie. That's all I got. That was the, my one nice thing to say about Shazam. I like the tires on his about. buttons. Well, I think it looks fun as someone that's hated like almost every DC movie. I uh, I think it looks fun. I like that the, the kid kids from seem nice. Well, I like that they get the kid from uh, it. Yeah, I, yeah, you know, and he was funny. I saw that's him in the trailer, and I was like, from. he's funny. Yeah, I like this kid. Yeah. It was the like asthmatic kid. Yeah, I don't know. I just liked the uh, just. We're like, looking at the stills now, and I'm just getting like I, grossed out. Like well, <laughs> that cool. well, first of all, I love Mark Strong is in this. Um, I mm-hmm. felt like he was honestly my favorite part about the Green Lantern movie. I thought he was a good Sinestro, so I yeah. like that he's so, coming I back. I always say Sinestro <laughs> in the first Green Lantern movie was great. I but still he was have yet to movie. see in the Green Lantern movie. Yeah, you're not missing I much. I still have yet to see that. I don't know if I ever will. But yeah, but I also think that uh, you know, Zachary Levy could be uh, a good fit for the role. I like. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I like that it's big with superpowers. Mm, this trailer has kind of no same. I, I went from having absolutely no interest or excitement about this to this being my most anticipated superhero movie until Infinity War 2, obviously. Actually, right. Captain Marvel. The well, we non Marvel related superhero that. movies. I thought for so the sure DC they'd movies. show a Captain Marvel trailer. <laughs> well, they not? well, it's because Marvel Studios isn't participating in San Diego Comic Con anymore. Why? Because yeah, it's under, under Disney, so they do it at like, the Disney Con. Got it. So I'd go to a Disney convention. I would too, except I'm a little upset with Disney right now, um, and because they, I, I think one of the, the big, 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 big news, unintentionally big, um, insert sex joke here, unintentionally big news from Comic Con was the fact that James Gunn was um, fired from the Marvel movies, and uh, a I'm joke pretty in itself. The gun was fired. Yeah, oh. I think I think what. I see what just happened. And and I know, like, a lot of people... Myself. Like, some people, <laughs> like, support the decision. Some people are against it. I personally think it's really stupid. It was stupid that they did it because, like, as somebody who He apologized. Who's, well, he apologized... And apologized, like, a while ago. He apologized yeah. a while ago. And this shit happened, like, what, ten years ago? Do you know what the fuck I was doing ten years ago? No, mm-hmm. you don't. You don't want to know what I was doing you ten years ago us. because it's why. No, she told us she was doing like eighteen years ago. <laughs> yeah, I told you right, I was sorry. doing. 18 I was years doing ago. this ten years ago, but nobody was here. And I was <laughs> yeah, imagine when I got when I actually started making money. Yeah, so um, no, I was doing I was doing terrible shit and shit. Just like in the beginning of this podcast, if you listen to older episodes, like the bullshit I that has just come out of my mouth because I, I do that. <laughs> I word vomit constantly and I say things that in the moment I'm just like I feel this way and then tomorrow I'm just like oh that was why did I say that but yeah. this <laughs> I do that all the time so the I mean yes I have accepted a long time ago that I would never be able to run for like public office and I'm okay with that but the idea of getting fired for like just stupid jokes like he if it, it would be one thing if he was an actual pedophile it'd be one mm-hmm, thing right, if he sure. actually raped somebody that's a whole different thing. So I think with firing him just for like even joking about it is to me kind of like really insulting. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. To like I think it's insulting to people who have actually experienced um 
actual change and like growth trauma in their life. or it you know well, yeah i mean the, the ironic thing too is like i saw a pretty funny thing on the internet that was just like oh yeah james gunn's getting fired for something he said six years ago and then it's like all the racist stuff disney used to have yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Somebody's just shoveling more copies of Song of the South under a carpet somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I know the cast Seriously. of the Guardians of the Galaxy is speaking in defense of him and stuff like yeah. that. Well, and you know, and you know what it is, and I don't, I don't necessarily blame Disney for this decision either, because like we have all come in contact with that overbearing Christian mother that just <laughs> ruins everything. And I mean, and if you haven't, you are a blessed person. And if you died tomorrow, you would be a better person for it. Because like these people, like if you've ever come in contact with these people, these are the same women that like push prohibition. Like these are the same people who just like ruin everything. Look, he and so I'm sure that that's what happened. They just got like they're like, well, hey, son, blah, blah, blah. and I noticed that it was um, he was making jokes about Donald Trump and conservative dug up the the stuff that he. Oh yeah, said, it was like a Fox News hit piece, basically knowing full well that liberals were going to be like, well, that's just insensitive Look, because I, we're really predictable like that. I think what really bothers me is that we have had, you know, someone who has bragged about grabbing women by the pussy. And now he's the president of our country. But we can't have James Gunn make a third Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Yeah. I also think it's dumb because, like, he apologized. He did this stuff, like, in the late 2000 aughts or, like, 2009 ish or something, apologized for it in 2012. And since then, hasn't done anything like that. He's been, like, honestly, he's been on the side of the people who kind of came and attacked him since right. then. Right. Like, shouldn't we promote people growing, aging, maturing? Yeah. Well, and that's a, or, or not, like, condemn them for making mistakes. Yeah, that's and a, his apology, even back in the day, he was like, I came into this industry thinking I was, like, a provocateur and, like, trying to stir stuff up. And it's like, yeah. if you look back, like you said, if I look back at the shit I said when I was 16 trying to be edgy, I'd be like, oh, my fucking God. <laughs> like, have you ever heard kids try to be cool? It's fucking well, terrible this is the biggest problem that the, anybody that's trying right to be cool is terrible anybody Seriously. trying to be cool is terrible the, the biggest problem i think that this country has and there are many but i will say that i think the biggest thing is that nobody wants to forgive it's like the moment anybody has stepped out of line in the slightest they have to be fired they have to walk away it's like nobody what's the saying about the glass houses oh yeah not throwing stones yeah, you know, and nobody, and, nobody is. And clean here's from the thing, and that's and here's the thing, right? And if we're a Christian nation, right? Isn't there a point? And I'm probably gonna butcher this quote, but I'm pretty sure this hippie said, "To err is human; to forgive is divine." Maybe yeah. he was from Mexico. I don't know, but I mean, also if yeah, you, if like you look at I his jokes, the Spanish version of that. <laughs> I mean, and really when it comes to, I mean, because this has been a, a topic among actual like comedians for ever talking about um, what it means to be offensive or like, is it is it your responsibility to like take to, is it your responsibility to protect others from like offending them? Not really. I mean, and 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 really the number one rule and what nobody really says, but the really the rule is if you're going to say something fucked up you need to be really funny. It has yeah. to be hilarious. Like, you have to make people ashamed at laughing because of how fucked up that was, you know? And that's really the rule for comedy in general. If you're going to make, like, a horrible joke, you better have people laughing. Mm. And it can be done. We've seen it done. Many great comedians do it every freaking day. Right. But I, I think J James Gunn just, like, had a Twitter account, got on early, and was like... I'm going to be funny. I think this is hilarious. And it's like, and it wasn't, you know, but that's like, it, it, I don't think that's a fireable offense. Like if he had done it while still being employed by Disney, if he did it yeah. like yesterday, that's if one thing. Doing it while but promoting. 10 years ago, we were a mm -hmm. very different culture 10 years ago. Also, how do you get rid of someone who's made probably one of the best, like commercially successful 
um, you know, uh, merchandise, um, you know, franchise. Strong female characters. Right. Like, what, what is... Like, I mean, James Gunn was hitting all of the um, right, the right notes for Disney. I mean, um... Now, if it comes out that, like, oh, he had a shit ton of child porn on his laptop, then that's... Well, then, then yeah, that's like, completely okay, that different, guy. obviously. Fuck I don't think guy. anybody's gonna be out but there defending not, him. But that's not... But, yeah, but that's one thing. But that, what, I mean, yeah, as I, because I tried. I was like, oh, I was like, they fired him, then he clearly must have done something really, really bad, and I was digging and digging and digging, and I saw just bad jokes. That was it. And I was like, that's... Yeah. that's Ridiculous. I just think we just need to accept that people do dumb stuff, and if they're not actually everybody deep, does people, dumb stuff, they should be forgiven, especially if they apologize for it. Yeah, yeah. and Hopefully. like understand where and, and like, to take out he of understood context, what he did wrong. First mm-hmm. of all, he A took ownership ago. of it, and even yeah. when he got fired again, he took ownership for it. He's like, "Hey, I did do that stuff. I know it's not funny." My bad. Right. And it's like, come on. I just hope that he That's makes so some right. serious seriously amazing independent films or a DC is like, hey, you want to come over here and make Green Lantern for us? Just make better movies here. Well, the thing that sucks too is because this all happened right at the time of Comic-Con. So like he was supposed to be there promoting a horror movie that he worked on and like Sony was like, don't come to the panel or whatever. And it's like, it's lame. It is lame. That's pretty lame. Super lame. Wicked lame. But yeah, I mean, but yeah, if it comes out some, there's some real shit under there, then that's one thing. But yeah, that's honestly, completely I story. just see a guy just making some stupid comments yeah. ten years ago. And also, it's it, and, and the thing cares? is, it's like Disney. Disney knew about it. There's no way that they didn't know about those tweets, especially because he apologized before. It's only because some asshole dug up these tweets again. Also, nothing he did is anywhere worse as bad as the shit Robert Downey Jr. did 20 years ago. Like, yeah. <laughs> let's yeah. be real. Like every Robert Downey Jr. is the best example of people forgiving Getting somebody. Getting a second chance. Yeah. I thought America loved second chances. Didn't yeah. did we love second chances? Look at Captain America, right? I mean, like Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. They were working for Magneto. They were part of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. And Cap's like, no, they deserve a second chance. You know, uh, exactly. I, I thought you were going to go with the different actors or the same actor in this Marvel <laughs> Universe route. No. Because no, Chris Evans just... was the Human Torch and then became Captain America. That's second chance. Well, and... Michael um, B. Jordan was the Human yeah. Torch. But, I mean, yeah, they deserve second chance. Marvel is, is, that is true. DC I, has a history of being the second yeah. chance for comic book actors. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. I just thought it was more applicable to, like, Green Cap being like, hey, Deadpool. they've done wrong in the past. Yeah. They can be Avengers. You know, like Hawkeye was a criminal. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, are... just a, it's just a weird... I mean, I mean, but this, this is the thing. This is why we need to talk about these things. And instead of just, like, drawing a line and saying, like, a line in the sand and just being like, you know, everything's black and white. It's like, no, there's a shit ton of gray area that we really need to explore as adults mm-hmm. and talk mm-hmm. about it. Mm-hmm. And... These four adults kind of all agree that that was a silly decision on Disney's part. But I mean, if you know, but but I got to say those white Christian moms that love to harp on shit or even the 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 hardcore like immovable like Twitter social, liberals. Yeah. Social <laughs> justice warriors that are like, ah, you know, I mean, yeah, they're they're a pain in the ass, too. And they ruin things and they take all the fun out of it. So Have we ever did we ever discuss the Hulk uh, thing that happened? What was the Where Hulk thing that like, happened? The Hulk, uh, his pecs are too like attractive, and they're trying to get him to put like a shirt on. <laughs> like, there's what? an actual petition going around for mothers that they think that the Hulk's going to <gasps> there like it is. Uh, God, corrupt I love them. young, like the youth. Like the boys of the girls. The Hulk's green yes. tits made my son gay. Well, I, no, I was going to say, first off, have they seen Thor? That's awesome. Because, goddamn. Have they seen who? Those are the pecs. Thor. Oh, Thor. Let's be yeah. real. <laughs> well, those, those are the are pecs that ones. turn everybody gay. They're not animated. Um, no, the Hulks are... They're all animated. Everybody's animated. Are you talking about the movie Hulk or the comic Hulk? Movie. I think all of them. That is ridiculous. Cause no, because you know what know it is. Comic book one. Because be you know what I love about it. I love I, what I love the most about these like moms and their their crusades. Um, like they're not fooling anybody. Like we know 
girl, you just looked at a picture of Call Hulk and said, those are some titties, and then they made you feel things, and then you immediately <laughs> Listen, jumped out of it and was like, this is inappropriate, because it made you feel things. This is probably the same moms who, like, supported, like, Twilight and, like, Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah. They're the reasons God. why they made so much money. Oh, God. Well, that well, yeah. vampire oh, God. boy wore a shirt, Paul. But he sparkled. When he did it. That is true. And that and they, embodies homosexuality. And when they, had, and when they actually <laughs> had sex, Excuse me. it was for procreation, so it was okay. So I just get allergic to talking about sweet You're man li- titties. Oh, I thought you were allergic Speaking to Speaking of bullshit. sweet man titties, I know Angela was talking about Aquaman, but what did y'all other so people think about I it? I have a question. Can I make one complaint real quick? Sure. This is the okay. dumbest complaint that you'll hear about it. <laughs> It's really stupid. Really, I acknowledge how dumb don't, this is. Don't overhype this, Jay, because if it's not stupid, I'm disappointed. Okay, I've been a fan of Shark Week for my entire <laughs> life. All right. And the scene where little baby fucking whatever his name is, Aqua Dude. Arthur? Uh, sure. Uh, when he's being <laughs> bullied and the shark headbutts the glass, that's a great white shark. Those aren't able to be kept in captivity. Because they will kill themselves because they don't understand that, like, there's a restricted swimming area. They've even tried to put sonar and stuff like that inside the tanks to lure them away, and they still die. So they knowingly would not keep a great white shark in a aquarium. Nerd. Nerd. <laughs> I fucking I, I, hate that that is a thing. No. It doesn't make sense. It's Nothing not matters. not really justified. No, I, I feel that. I feel that because I have, like, I have a, I too have a question. And it is, how is, like, a white guy and this, like, really pale, blonde... Elsa-looking queen lady? Elsa-looking queen gonna produce a beautiful Hawaiian. I, that's, like, the... That's like, <laughs> I don't think his dad was... I swear to God, I see like a white guy in the rain yeah. in like New England. Uh, his dad, and I'm like, what his dad is kind of gave on? me like a Prince Eric vibe. Yeah, I was like, what is happening right now? He's the blonde but, dude, right? No, that's his half brother. The, oh, okay. No, the, um, yeah, we're looking. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah that that is also as silly as the shark thing. So. Aquaman Wait, already. hold on. Dolph Lundgren is in this movie? Did anybody know that? I did not. Where? Wait, Dolph His dad? Oh, my God. He's playing <gasps> King Narius. Narius? Oh. Ooh. Yeah. He's also in Creed 2. <laughs> yeah, it's a good is. year for Dolph Lundgren. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, Thomas Curry, here we go. Yeah, not white. Oh, He's of New Zealand. He's oh, Mullen. Okay. So. Okay. Okay, that's Makes okay. Sense. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> just because of the way in the trailer, it just looked like they just like made him. Yeah, but he is New Zealand. No, you're correct. I stand corrected. So but mine's still justifiable. Damn it! <laughs> it is Jay. Um, what yeah, Shark Week wants you, dicks? <laughs> I, I I don't know. I mean, Nothing honestly, right now. Shark Week I'm right gonna, now. I'm I'm gonna go see Aquaman. I I. Me oh too. yeah, it looks more fun than the other ones. Oh God! I, I, no, I think Shazam it's looks more whole, fun. You know where it lost me. You know where it lost me when, when he goes. Well, when, when he goes that, to the, the helicopter thing. Redheads. No, when he when he no no oh it lost me way before that. It okay. lost me when he drops into the submarine that I thought was underwater. I don't know. And he drops in. And he like looks over his shoulder. And he's like, "Permission to come aboard." I'm like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> get away from me with that. I didn't register that in my brain. <sighs> So the part you were talking about, Jay? Projectile vomit on the television. I'm so angry. When Mira jumps out of the helicopter or the plane, and then he's like, huh, redheads, huh? And he jumps out. There's a shot right after that where there's a goat that turns <laughs> yes. and like winks at the camera. <laughs> no, no, no. Not even just that. It makes a noise I and it doesn't that. open its mouth. I just like, as soon as I yeah. saw that, I was like, okay, that that's the I'll see this movie just for that alone I do have to say the chick Amber heard the chick who plays um, Mira is that her name mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. I I she's very nice to look at as well I yeah that's <laughs> she's I, very I, nice to look at I'm I so don't, glad you brought is, that up because I wanted to say that yeah like I like the I like the <laughs> shade of red that like a uh, like offensively fake color red mm-hmm. I love it's it. it's very Ariel yeah. I love it like, and it is this is it Ariel is. like it makes me 10 think years of after red. Little Mermaid shit's got bad 
and it she's makes like me ready think to fuck of, shit up. Uh, yeah, Princess Ariel, and it makes me happy. Can they just make a Little the- Mermaid movie with her? <laughs> They're well, making they- a Little Mermaid live action, aren't they? Yeah, with Lin Manuel Miranda doing the soundtrack and everything. Huh. Because that. that's his favorite I, Disney movie, and he named his son mm. Sebastian after the crab thing. Got it. Well, and I noticed that they fixed the talking underwater thing. I we actually think that looks pretty that. good. All the underwater stuff. I, 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 because the I hair looks sure. a little off to me because it's like moving around too much. I don't know. I, I think it looks okay for me. And honestly, I'm just clappy. I'm, I'm just clappy. I'm just happy that nobody's, you know. You have to take back the. Or like when they have to make air bubbles every time they have to talk like in Justice League. Yeah, which I thought was kind of clever. Talking, but seeing an entire movie of that would be very lame. I mean, it's clever for one movie, but for an entire species, an entire civilization that lives underwater, they can't just be constantly making air bubbles. Yeah. Also, there are like they live underwater forever. There's underwater peat dwelling people, but the only method of communication they developed was speaking in English in air bubbles. She was chewing in your figures. <gasps> I stopped her. She was trying, though. Dog life. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, overall, I think it looks ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It does. and I'll see it. But you know what? Yeah. Here's what yeah. I'm going to say about it. There was there was color. Mm-hmm. I liked the there action. Was. Um. Yeah. The action's all right. Uh, I want to see. I feel like they they still have the problem of explaining what the entire movie is, like in the trailer. Yeah. Yeah, because Aquaman is such a dumb character on the surface, <laughs> so yeah. they're just like, we gotta get butts in seats. <laughs> no, no, no. Even though yeah. all they really have to do is have a, the the babe with the red hair, and then the babe with the the muscles on the, and then they jump in water, <laughs> and that seems like we're a very feminist us podcast. Humans would go see it. <laughs> Honestly, you know what would have been better for me? They're like, both babes, Paul. If they if they had just shown the clip of the goat, and then yep. showed the clip from Justice League of him walking on the pier with like a drink, like a bourbon, like they just reused that scene, and playing the white stripes. I would have still just been like, all right, cool. Like, and then and then I would be like, I guess I got to go see this movie, but they didn't. Nope. nope, what, nope. Wait, what's what song? What song did they have instead? Did they have a song? They had a song Wait. in this trailer. They did, but nobody what. remembers exactly. Exactly. It was rock and roll, you know. Exactly. Nobody cares. Aquaman, super now rock and you're roll. Man. An aqua, aqua man. <laughs> you talk too fresh. <laughs> it would be funny if it was like the village people, <laughs> Macho Man. Yeah. I yeah I would I would do that too. But the goat, I feel more emotionally invested in the goat than I do about the actual characters in the story. I just the second time I watched the trailer, like right before we started recording, (laughs) and I noticed that they they had in the trailer they held on the goat to turn and react like as an audience surrogate, and I was just like, oh my god, (laughs) what a dumb thing to do. They make it make a noise, and it doesn't open its mouth. <laughs> Jay, the, and the it's animals not a real goat noise. You like gotta the, chill. They have to have a real goat <sighs> noise too, like the ah! <laughs> goat screaming like screaming humans. <laughs> I just can, I like can that just, so much more. Actually, I know. He like right? jumps out, and the goat just goes ah. <laughs> Well, I mean, the window, the door of the airplane is open. You think the goat would react like? Wah! Like the goat just like to whatever. slide out or something, and it just freaking out. It's just one of those or, goats from like uh, I don't know the one that they use samples for, and then like interjected into other songs. Like what you've seen oh. that like clip of the Taylor Swift song. Oh yeah, no, even but better. Goat, if they could do it to like. What if it was like the Flintstones, and the goat just looked at the camera and went, "Monday, is my right." I don't know. I think it'd be great if somehow they could have done that did. with Thor Ragnarok. Just like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> just, like just goats of Asgard. <laughs> ah! We're making this so much better. <laughs> I think so, too. I think so, definitely. The goat could have just said Shazam. Yeah. <laughs> Say my name. What's your name? I don't know. I'm still... <laughs> <laughs> i'm yeah. still pretty i'm still pretty excited to see it even though oh, it yeah, looks nah, ridiculous um, yeah yeah i'll watch I am, it until I'm the second also, trailer comes out they make it look like shit 
I mean, <laughs> I'm going to go because Paul's going to need someone to go with him. So I'll go. Thank you. I appreciate, Wait, I appreciate when, taking that, well, that's, that water that, bullet for me. That's marriage. Yeah. When's it come out? December. I'll December. Uh, I'll be there in August. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but there is the other trailer we saw, which is Godzilla King of the Monsters. That looks uh, I am really amazing. excited. <laughs> yeah. Dude, my I first like show the last one. I love that it opens in Boston. Yeah. And yeah. all I could think of when the clouds are coming, you see the clouds going past the um uh the sign at Fenway. What's it? The sicko sign. sign? The sicko, sicko sign, thank you. I just thought it'd be great if Kamakoba should do a skit where as the clouds roll by, just cut to inside the store. And Matt's being like we're staying open. <laughs> <laughs> I just pictured myself at work with no windows and not knowing what's going on until a giant monster destroys the city. <laughs> Jay's laughing because he knows Matt really well and he knows that he would stay open if Godzilla attacked the city. Yeah, like yeah, someone's in the someone's in the store. Matt's like if you're here to if you're here to buy something, you can stay, but you don't have to leave. <laughs> like, no, you gotta go over to there. the go to the little shelf that has all the licensed comics. Pull like the Dan's Godzilla ones front there. and center. Dan's yeah. still in and there. then he gets like, super like, meta. I got nowhere to be. Yeah. Reads the comic and sees that conversation in the comic. Matt just like at the computer, just looking out the window, like. But yeah, I, I'm super into this movie trailer because I my like excitement arc for this like new wave Godzilla has been a wild ride. I remember right. the first trailer they ever showed. They showed like a teaser at Comic Con, and I was there, so I was already <gasps> super hyped just because I was at Comic Con. And then they showed a trailer that was just like. Well, at dust the end of the and... King Kong movie. They had mm-hmm. that little nod, and we were all just like, ooh. So, yeah, so yeah. the King Kong movie is what got me excited, because the Godzilla movie, I was like, meh. It was pretty lame, I thought. Yeah. And then, yeah. like, as soon as they well, kill off Brian Cranston right away, who was the best part of the movie by far. So, yeah. yeah. I think it's a half hour of, like, great oh. movie, <sighs> then an hour of bullshit, and then, like, the last mm-hmm. half hour is pretty good. So, I so got... It's an overall, like, an all right movie. I got way, like, watching this trailer, and I don't know if that's a fair statement, because I'm saying I got way too excited, but really, I think I was the appropriate amount of excited to see Zhang Ziyi, and when I saw her, I literally went, Zhang Ziyi! Like, I got so excited. I fucking love her, and I love seeing her in things, because I miss her. I miss her face. She has another face that I could just stare at. I like I like her. Very pretty. She's aging beautifully. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I'm excited for all the new monsters. I love how they're embracing the whole like hollow earth they've been here all along thing from Cold yeah. Sky Island. And she called them like Titans. I was like, oh mm-hmm. my god, yes, yeah. you did. And then you see Mothra. It's just too bad like, with the yep. wings. Yeah. I was like, oh. it's just too and bad. And then they're with just like and the king and they show King Hedra and I was like, oh yeah. yeah. It's just too bad that Tom Hiddleston can't be in it. And if he is, he's gonna be like old. Because didn't isn't Kong Island set in the seventies? Yeah. I would actually love Something like that. if they have like him and uh, Alison Bree's characters, just as old people, just like I saw a big monkey once. I knew this would come. John C. Riley's character is just like crazy, he's, still he's alive. Still just there. like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I loved that part. <laughs> oh my god, I love that movie so much. I, Co- it was Kong a Skull lot Island. more fun than I it thought it was going to be. Awesome! It was. It was awesome. the best surprise. Speaking of fun, and I, I'm kind of jumping a little bit because I know I should save this to fun things that we um, are doing at the end. But I, I, but we're talking about giant monster movies, and Paul and I, because my birthday's today. Paul, pause uh-huh. for happy birthdays. And then uh, we watched last night. We watched um, Rampage as per my request, yep. and um, the Dwayne the Rock Johnson it film. It was yes. so dumb, but I liked it. I thought it was so stupid, but I really <laughs> I've enjoyed wanted to it. See, I've wanted to see it a lot lately. I really enjoyed yeah. it. It it, it kind of oh, so it, it hits the Rock it, it, can it checks, sell a movie. Yeah, but yeah. it checks all the right boxes if you know that like. It's like a dumb monster movie. It's a dumb monster movie. It's based movie. off of a video game where you just climb and punch the side of buildings as monsters. It's and so, eat people. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah, that's pretty good. And the rock and light control the giant monster by just doing sign language. Yep. Like, let's just say like, well, I love the rock so kind much. Of. But there thing. is a uh, there is like, a crucial part where he's like there there him and like the the female lead 
have the antagonist pointing a gun at them and they're like he's like I'm gonna go like and he's gotta go like sacrifice himself or something and his big like his big distraction is him like just yelling George into the sky and I thought that was great George no he just went George and I was like Okay. <laughs> and, and I kept waiting for the George of the Jungle theme to kick in. George, yeah. George, 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 George. I was like, really? Yeah. That that was it? That's all it took? Watch yeah, watch us for that plaza. I'm gonna, yeah, just, just do that, guys. Try it. Try it out, guys. If you're in the street. I saw they put, I saw they put Jumanji George. on Showtime, so I was gonna watch that. Oh, and yeah. Do it. I, I also we need to I almost went movie. and saw Skyscraper because I was so bored last weekend and I was like, <laughs> this looks terrible. I want to see Skyscraper because, quite frankly, I will watch anything that The Rock is in. Same. Um, so because I know what The Rock is in Hollywood. And I I loved Escape to Witch Mountain. Sat through that. Never saw it. Yeah, you should. The Rock how'd is you in. See, how, how'd you feel about Tooth Fairy? Um, I would watch it again. I have okay. no problem. Same. I love I love The Rock. I think the he's Rock makes fabulous. no sense because he has been in more terribly unsuccessful financially movies than anyone else, but he's still just like everybody loves him. I don't they know keep anybody who doesn't love The Rock. And Vin honestly, Diesel. Vin Diesel doesn't like The Rock. <laughs> yeah, you know why? Because yeah, The Rock is everything Vin Diesel yeah, wants to be. Yeah, they have like a yeah. huge. Well, you know what? I'm like, not supposed to be on say screen it. together. You Fuck know why? Diesel, guess what the best? The rock is the guess shit. when Fast and Furious got good, when they brought the Rock in. I need to watch those movies still. We try. Just don't don't watch any of them until Fast Five. I think that's my Fast problem. Five is when they the introduced the Rock, and they also introduced the idea that physics don't matter. This is just a dumb superhero movie with <laughs> stupid meatheads and cars. Was that the one that we tried exactly. to watch? What did we try to watch? The first one. No, that wasn't the first one. Oh my god, don't watch the first one. I've seen the first one. We watched, we put, you put one on. I think we started after Tokyo Drift. I think that was the one. I didn't didn't watch Tokyo Drift. The The one after. I think you're thinking of somebody else. The one after Tokyo Drift Drift is in a weird spot where it's a little more ridiculous than the original, like, couple were. But it's not as ridiculous as. You need to watch Fast Five because the first, like, scene in the movie is Vin Diesel on, like, a prison transport. And the way they get him off of the transport is so stupid, and it would have killed hundreds of people in real life. But just it just sets the tone for how dumb okay. the movie is, and it's great. Okay. I'll do and it. The Rock's know, in it. The Rock is in it. I know that I haven't seen the, those movies, but I did see a scene that like the Rock ad libbed in. I uh, Tyrese is that his name? The mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, bald dude. I uh, the Rock's walking up to Tyrese and Ludacris, and Tyrese just goes. Oh shit, better hide your baby oil. And The Rock just goes, <laughs> Oh shit, better hide that big ass forehead. <laughs> and the wow. and Ludacris like actually spit out his drink and had to get off camera. It was great. That's excellent. I think just that scene. I think Tyrese great. also doesn't like The Rock in real life. Why? Really? Why has he got so many haters? Is it because I think he's it's so because awesome? I think that's probably, probably part of it. They're all jealous. Yeah, because he seems like the most likable person because he's made these terrible movies, like, super likable. Mm-hmm. And he works so, out I don't all know. the time. How do you not like The Rock? I just, I don't know. I don't trust that. I don't trust. So, Vin Diesel, Tyrese, I don't trust you now. You are not Groot. <laughs> <laughs> I do not Is trust any, you. Was there any other, like, big trailers that came out of Comic Con? I, I feel like Warner Brothers kind of stole Ball the Z. show. Oh yeah! I did not see that. <laughs> this is where right. I zone out. They're making they're making Broly canon. Uh huh. Which is like that, I know awesome. that means a lot to you two. <coughs> Broly, uh, the big hulking Super Saiyan, mm-hmm. only in the non-canon movies. Well, they're bringing him in. They're bringing wow. him out to the canon. Wowzers! That is interesting. This is like if they're... you took a what if character, Paul, from a <laughs> from a non six one six Marvel universe and brought him into the six one six. So, like, if they took Agent Coulson from the movies and made him a character in the comics? Exactly. Literally water. the exact same thing. But, like, <laughs> Coulson's you. way more likable. Yeah. This because, trailer, like, so the thing... Go ahead. I was going to say, I haven't even watched any of Super yet, because I'm still on my watch through of DBZ. But the animation, because they got a different animation studio than any other mm-hmm. Dragon Ball thing, it looks so good. It looks so much better than everything that Super has been. 
I, this like, trailer looks like what I wish modern anime looks like. Because you can tell it's like a lot of digital art, but it doesn't have that like super weird mix of weird animation and like CG, like CG and stuff. It and, just yeah, cell shading I and feel stuff like, like that. This is which kind is of what like when Zero used a lot. Mm-hmm. And it's like remember what, when they first started like coloring comic books digitally, and it mm-hmm. like was super obvious. It didn't look very good. But now everything is clearly done digitally, but you can't really tell because they've like kind of learned what they're doing. I feel like this trailer for the super movie is is kind of like that. I'm just super excited. It looks badass. The I'm action looks badass. Guys. The Damn. only difference of Broly is like the they put like a giant scar on his cheek for some reason. <laughs> yeah, and he wears Saiyan armor. <laughs> yeah, I'll try it out. I know he cool. bitch slaps Frieza too, which is pretty great down for that all right i like that i'm super back into dragon ball stuff again after like a <laughs> 15 20 year hiatus <laughs> everyone was it all started it all started with fighters i got that game and it was so good i'm like i gotta start getting back into this again i need to start playing it again it's been like a few Me weeks too. since i've played evo is uh in like a week and a half i think like the giant fighting game tournament and dragon ball fighters is the number Ooh. one biggest game there because more people entered so it's going to be I bet some that dude good that ass plays, stuff there's a dude that plays Yamcha as his main and he just fucking houses people in that game Ooh. I, I think his name is like King Yamcha something Yamcha sucks he's the worst Dragon Ball Z <laughs> character but he's so fucking good in the game yeah it doesn't make sense and like it rewatching doesn't. Dragon Ball Z I'm like man yeah, I used to think Yamcha was cool when I was in like fourth I, grade I, you know what I still love Yamcha <laughs> I still love Yamcha, like, and it's not fair because he's like a human. Yeah, well, I mean, so that's not fair. Krillin, so is Tien. But I, I still like Krillin. So is Tien. They're not they're not that powerful necessarily. But exactly. Like, so it's not their. In the show, you know? Yamcha is like this weird surfer dude. He's like, oh, dude, whoa, I can fight Wait. all these guys, and then he dies all the time. <laughs> in the show, in like Super, he's still trying to like win Bulma over and get her back from Vegeta. She's yeah. like, oh, I can't it's wait like, to impress all the ladies here. <laughs> I'm so good at baseball. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. You know what? I do miss, like, 80s, like, Japanese art. Where That's everybody's good. just blocky and muscular. I miss just, that. Yeah. Old Dragon Ball Z art yeah. was so, like, cool. Yeah. It was great. Watching Kai over, like, the first season-ish, like, the Saiyan saga up to the Frieza was, like, still super 80s ass anime and then there's like a period of like shitty animation they must have had like not a very good budget and then the cell saga was kind of like the introductory to more like modernish anime but i loved like how everybody had like tapered pants with a crease in it i thought that was Mm -hmm. great (laughs) that was great (laughs) like Uh, it's so 80s anime I'm like just I've been watching Fist of the North Star for the past few years because it's uh. so long and like I I get caught up in other shows all the time. So like it, it's fun watching a show where someone goes from like being six feet tall to 14 stories high. It's, it's it lovely. Really is. <laughs> it's lovely. I mean, I, I'm with you. I feel you. I get it. I see it and I love it. My heart yearns for it. Like just a, the yeah, way, like, in 70s, like, manga and anime, everybody just has, like, curly cues, like, in just yep. abundance. And there's always that one character that has one over the eye. There's a pompadour you know. character. Oh, yeah. And their eyelashes are on point and they're just, like, beautiful. Yeah, and yeah, like, it's just everything so airy and flowy and curly rose cues. Rose petals just appear cues. in the background. Everywhere. <laughs> so many rose petals or cherry blossom petals. And then, like... Yep. Yeah, I mean every every decade kind of had like a solid thing, and I appreciate that. Good times with the anime. Yeah, good times Exciting with anime. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is there anything else? Mm-hmm. else? Um, I was going to say, I mean, not like movie wise, but I was really pumped with all the Marvel Legends news that came out because you guys know how much I love collecting those. Um, They're doing like a Jim Lee 90s Charles Xavier in the floating yellow space chair. Yeah. Um, 
and they're doing like a, a gambit. They're doing a kingpin build a figure, so that's pretty cool. It's like uh, he just looks great. Like he's got like the cane with the diamond, the white suit. Um, there's a new archangel figure coming out with like different faces, and I love that mm. one of them is like the the gold skull mask that he wears from X Factor. I thought it, I you know I didn't know it was like a gold mask. I thought that was just he just had a gold face. And I was like yeah. Yeah, no. he's, he's, the mask and he's he's blue. blue. Yeah, um, I, yeah. I still want to see a, an archangel done right in an X Men movie mm-hmm. where he's like blue, where he's blue and mm-hmm. super hot. Like yeah, because I had the biggest crush on Archangel. <laughs> like huge. Like you know how Vision looked. <laughs> like I, I think that kind of same kind of like texture for the face. Where it's like Kool Aid blue. A, yeah. a yeah. silicone spatula was the texture of Vision. I just remember seeing that movie and I'm like, he looks like my kitchen utensils. <laughs> like wow. that non stick, non burn, just like water just beads off it. it was, he was definitely like a Kool Aid red and I appreciated it. Or like a purpley red. But I liked it. It's like a summer popsicle. Yeah. <laughs> you just want to look at that Thanos. You just want to look at him. He, he, I bet he tastes like raspberries. Probably. Tastes dirty. Mm, he probably tastes Ooh. like rubber. Yeah, and metal. But they also <laughs> show the. But doing like, then again, Scarlet Witch is super <laughs> into him, so there's probably some life to him. Raspberries. Pepperkesh. Um, yeah. Raspberries. <laughs> I assume he just tastes like raspberries. That'll do it. They're also doing a Hercules figure, which I'm really excited nice. about because because now I can do like an '80s Avengers with like Black Knight mm-hmm. and. Uh, Captain Marvel, um, you know, Monica Rambo, who, um, the black one. I like that they're still coming out with, like, the miscellaneous <laughs> toys and stuff like that, even though, like, they're not as popular, I guess. Yeah, I, I think like action always- figures are still very popular, considering Paul has to hunt for them, it seems. Right. It's fun. It's a part I love, of the adventure. I, I love wrestling with a... T- no, I'm, I'm just going to stop that. It was going to come out right. Yeah. <laughs> we almost had ourselves a James I don't, I don't want Disney to fire me someday. Um, <laughs> yeah, but no, it's fun. And I got the latest X-Men wave, and I got a really cool, like, punk rock 80 storm mohawk yeah. and lightning bolt action. Bitches better watch out. <laughs> I love that storm. Oh yeah, I like how they've tried to like kind of bring that vibe back, but it's just it's this never been work. as good as it was in the eighties. This doesn't work. Yeah, um, like I've been reading uh, X Men Blue, and they have like Lightning Blood Bolt Storm. It was like a that. vampire storm from a different universe. Oh lord, and she's she's like that storm, but a vampire. And I'm like, you're not you're not Why my eighties storm. Do you're that, not the one who man. kicks Cyclops's ass to become the leader. That's silly. Oh god, yeah, and I'm getting into weird. 80s Cyclops territory. I, I know this is totally where people were like, fuck this character. It's yeah, like- I remember doing the research back before we did our Cyclops breakdown years ago. And like, he was a sh- He's a bad husband. He was a bad dad. But I will say this. Uh, it's not Chris Claremont's fault. And apparently Chris Claremont didn't even want an X-Factor comic to happen. Because, you know... And it was like, hey, what are the original X-Men doing? Let's make a comic out of them. And it's just like... Yeah, like it gets awkward. it gets weird. I I I'll, I'll, I'll always be a fan of what Stanley and Jack Kirby set out to do. But anyway, but that's for another episode. I do believe it is that magical time of the show that we talk about what we've been reading, what we've been watching, what we've been doing. What's been making us happy? Well, um, yeah. Sells the first at work, I need to remember. Yeah, I I need to remember the anime that I've been watching, but uh, Cells at Work has been pretty awesome so far. Like, anime Osmosis Jones, where, like, platelets are the cutest fucking thing in the world. And because they're just, like, school kids that hold each other's hands to, like, fix the blood clots and stuff like that. And uh, red blood cells just are delivery people trying to carry boxes of oxygen. Yeah, I want to see that. to people. It's really good. Um... So I'm watching that. Uh, Grand Blue is getting animated by the same people that did uh, Daily Life of High School Boys. So it's a college comedy where a dude's just like trying to live a normal life and he gets roped into a 
diving club where it's just a bunch of bros drinking and like, let's fucking party. He's like, I don't want to do it anymore. But he's really good at drinking and gets real into it when he starts. Uh, so that's a, a fun one. Um, there's a lot of etchy stuff, but I'll spare everyone with that. I'll just say that there's one show that's actually called uh, Look at Me with a Disgusted Face and Show Me Your Panties. Yeah. Gosh, that's just I a thing. Idea. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. I'm Something just going to say that exists. Right there. I think that's weird. Right. That is. It's funny to me at the same time. Because it's like, oh, there's definitely a demographic out there for it. No one just wants to admit very that specific. they're a part Very it. specific demographic. Uh, it's only a three-minute Not judging episode. it, you I know, if that's what you're into. It's cool. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. New season of Overlord, season three just started. Uh, that's really well animated. If you guys don't know what it is, it's like uh, a dude gets put into a video game, but like, uh, and he's his character from it where he's like maxed out level. And it, it just it's not like video game logic. It's he's put into the actual world of it. So it, instead mm -hmm. of it being a video game, it's more like a, a Dungeons and Dragons type thing where it's there's lizard men and he's taking over different areas and stuff mm. like that. And uh, it, it's really cool. And the animation is real great. And uh, still reading Goblin Slayer, which continues to be great. Uh, food porn, I think, is continuing on. Uh, from where it finished off. Uh, uh, and My Hero Academia continues to be great in the anime and the uh, manga. <laughs> I'm trying to think this week. I've been reading... Go on, Go on. Like I said, I've been trying to catch up on the X-Men in Marvel just because I hear they're going to start doing big stuff again now that they own the rights and they're killing the Inhumans and stuff and I'm just trying to catch up. I hear X-Men Red is really good so I'm trying to read up until when that starts. I think X-Men Navy so, Blue is where it's at. I've been reading regular Blue. It's okay. Mm. <laughs> I like um, Red, White, yeah. and Blue. <laughs> I saw, also unrelated, I saw a Comixology Unlimited I think it was five ninety nine a month now instead of, I think it used to be like 10 or something. Damn. So I, so I got a month of that. Yeah. I'm going to try to read I find awesome. Comixology Unlimited I like once a year because they usually continue some of the volumes so I can kind of catch up and then just cancel the subscription. Yeah. Oh, that's not a bad it's idea. I'm about to cancel the subscription, though. Um, I'm going to jump through a know, bunch of hoops. <coughs> There's also um, DC has their streaming service starting soon. It's basically like it's their oh, Netflix yeah. Comixology Amazon where you can watch all of the DC animated movies and regular movies. You can buy the comics or like read... I think the comics with a uh, subscription like Marvel Unlimited. Um, I did do the pre-order. I'm excited for it to start because uh, only on that site will you get the um, you'll be able to buy the Bruce Tim animated Justice League figures. <laughs> My voice did crack. Why am I so that? Fine. It's adorable. <laughs> and um, you also, when you pre-order, you get automatically entered into a Aquaman premiere contest. And they're not even a sponsor. He's just saying this for the heck of it. <laughs> oh god! So, is this is this streaming service god, theoretically going to have? That would be my luck going to the Aquaman premiere. <laughs> that would be my fucking luck. You're like, aren't you excited? You know what it would be like? It would be like Angela would be like Bruce Willis in The Fifth Element. Like, oh my god, aren't you excited? <laughs> thrill, 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 thrill. Oh god, that's like. <sighs> God damn it. But yes, yeah, so the movie... I don't Rob, you had a question about the streaming. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, so is this eventually going to be like Marvel Unlimited? <laughs> They'll have like most of their back issues and stuff on it? Yeah. And then you can watch like Superman, uh, the Bruce Tim Batman animated series, Super Friends, like basically anything that involved animation or live action, you can be able to watch it. Like, you know, Chris Nolan's Dark Knight. Like, it's That's all going to cool. be there. That is pretty sweet. And the Mostly because content, there's so much... Like I was gonna the, say, there's just so much old DC stuff I haven't read. I'd love right. to have it all in one place. And they're I and they're the cartoons too. But they're also doing a Swamp Thing show, uh, Harley Quinn, and they and uh, you all saw that Titans trailer. Oh yeah! Oh, yeah. yeah. What a wonderful how... high budget, good looking thing that was. <laughs> yeah, Fuck that, totally. Man. Those kids that look like they're they're doing cosplay for the first that. time. <laughs> 
God, I forgot about that. Yeah, that looks. My description nice. for it has oh been God. that like they look like they're kids at their second anime convention that they don't know how body paint works quite yet, and that there's like the dude that's super into it who's Robin that looks pretty decent, and then his girlfriend just happened to have purple hair and so she's calling herself Raven. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, you guys know how I feel about that. It was was just so cringily low budget that I'm just like, why even bother? But other than that, I'm looking forward to the DC thing. I'm looking forward to the DC. All you have to do is say, hey, animated series and all of their comics on one place. I'm looking forward to New Mutants because that chick's in it too. Yes. Yeah, she's playing magic. She's playing magic. And I am. The girl with the eyes? Yeah, I wonder if she'll have a Russian accent. Because I feel like to, to not acknowledge she that she's to. the brother of Pietro, you know, a.k.a. Colossus. I will say one of my favorite bits from the old 90s X-Men the animated series, whenever Colossus was on, I feel like every other word out of his mouth was Ileana. It was like, Ileana! I was like, was he Italian? <laughs> <laughs> it's like they were still working on I'm the so accents. I'm so mad I'm going to crack these barrels. <laughs> We don't know uh, what you are talking about. Yeah, I can't do a Russian accent. I, I think it's exactly, <laughs> it was better than Paul's Italian it accent. Good in, like, it sounded good in my You were trying head, to do Russian, but you did Italian. Yeah. So. It's me, Vladimir Putin. <laughs> I can, I can only do Russian if it's my Russian math teacher. That's it. I can't do a male Russian. I can do a fe- an old cranky female Russian woman. Mm. <laughs> I can't do Russian at all. It always comes out Jamaican. Oh, God. See, I know people who try to do Irish <laughs> and they sound so Jamaican. Different. It is. It's like top of the morning to you, man. It's very, what? very, very tough. I once um, I worked with a, a Russian woman and I was try. I was like, I don't know. I, this, I worked at a white hen pastry or pantry, white hen pantry for like white hen pastry sounds delicious. like a month. Yeah, it does. And I worked with a Russian woman, and I was like, as I was going to bed at like eight o'clock, because I get had to get up at like four in the morning to like open this place. I was bitching about how she was talking to me. And my boyfriend at the time was just like, "Oh, what was she saying?" And I was just like, "Oh, she's like, you have to go in and get out the roast beef," <laughs> and like, I just. <laughs> It didn't come out like yeah, so I, I gave up. Do you know what's right funny there? about you, you about you telling that story? For shits and giggles, I listened to our very, very, very first podcast made in voice, joke, and then? you told that story. Fuck, man, I've come full circle. Yeah, the beginning of the end. I'm out. <laughs> Bye, guys. It's been good. <laughs> Damn, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to bring up in a mean way. No, no, I know. I was. It was a joke. Eric, it was a joke. My mom's watching. We're not getting divorced, mom. <laughs> the Twitch yeah, chat's well, going to guys. There's nothing else. You guys have taken everything, from me, <laughs> oh, including, the ro- including the roast. Including the roast. Yeah. So anyway, I, do that. I haven't gone back and listened to our super old stuff in a long time. I love, like, I love because when you were talking, you yeah. talked about it. I don't know, like a month or so ago, and you said that we all had that like cool soothing voice yeah, I did well, I, I, I want need to find that I uploaded one of our like first test podcasts to SoundCloud or something like four years ago we sounded just so, we so could kinda, warm <laughs> we were all just like, <laughs> like afraid oh, to talk at full voice so like, sultry yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. I was terrible and, uh, his stuff is coming out mm. now no that's gonna be I real, good, real good. good I was I, I literally was like I just feel like like when there's like I just yeah. feel like like I've noticed, I feel like I notice when I go back America, and listen I feel that I like <laughs> like, like, like like that's when me. I would go back and listen I would hear all of us say like so much and I can't tell if I've gotten any better I don't know I like somebody at so. work pointed out you say like a lot I'm like no I like don't oh god you know what <laughs> I Everybody haven't gone does. back to listen yet but I know that I eat less food on mic <laughs> <laughs> Although the last time I recorded with you, you did have straight up sticks of celery. But that was funny. <laughs> it was it was comically you used. So. Full sticks of celery. I was like, dude. dude people were pulling, but you were good on doing like the mute, so that was nice. People but. were pulling bits of celery out of their like speakers. It was so bad. It was crazy. <laughs> cray cray. You did it again. Like? Yeah. No, I didn't like. 
What do you I read remember, it like? In, uh, what are you into? Like, I just remember I was listening to an episode once, and I was like, like so mortified at how many times I said "like" in a row that the next like three podcasts we recorded, I like, I just did it again. <laughs> <laughs> We're too aware. We I know, but I would. We're too I barely spoke because I took so much time trying to make sure I did not say "like." That when I spoke, I was talking very like right now. I'm I can talking. hear you forcing it. <laughs> yeah. It's so hard. I just In want to like. Trying not I... to say it's like or the F word makes talking very hard. But yeah. fuck is so much no. fun. I know, but coming from New England, you tend to just use it as like, like, like. punctuation. Yeah, it's a filler word. Yeah, yeah, fuck is definitely a punctuational. Or, it's just what you do. Like yeah. and I think people filler words. I think people think that like a few seconds of silence is really awkward, but then when you go back and listen to it, it sounds completely normal. Yeah. It's conversation. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to try and find the first episode that I was in. That's You should. You're, are we still recording? Like, yeah. Yeah, we gotta finish okay, just what making sure. Oh yeah. Okay, sorry. What were you? This doing, is the part Paul? of the episode where we all kind of devolve out of the structure of a podcast. <laughs> what are you doing? And just start huh? talking about random nonsense. Um well, I like non structure. What are you better. into? What are you Casual reading? conversations oh. better. <laughs> um I thought like what are you doing? Um well you guys know I'm still reading a bunch of X Men. I love X Men. Um and yeah, it's uh it's just really good. Where, where are you at? You still in the eighties? I'm still oh, very much in the eighties. Um, like I said, Jean so Grey. You, and you're Jean, going off. You're not just sticking with the main line. You're hitting X Factor, New Mutants. Well, I'm trying to do it chronologically. So, and it makes sense because anytime you're like, oh, to see what Xavier was doing, read New Mutants, and it's like, oh, all right, I read New Mutants, and I read New Mutants, like, oh, to figure out what you know Wolverine was doing in Japan, check out his miniseries. Oh, all right, I read the miniseries. Go oh, to see what Kitty Pryde was doing. Check out Nightcrawler's mini. It's like Jesus Christ, <laughs> but um, I love it though. Um, He's on my blast. Yeah, I am. It's a lot of fun to read. Eighties X Men is my favorite hunk of anything comic book related. What? Where? What was it when they were in Australia? Isn't that your favorite part of the X Men when they were in Australia? That's like my favorite era, just because it's so silly. I'm trying they, to like, think. Fight when the is brood that? Brood in Australia. God, I think that I... was latish eighties. Okay, maybe it was I'm, still maybe. when there's two teams. There was the X X Men and the X Factor. Um, I think oh. this is when a lot of like the Image guys started doing X Men books. Like I think there's some oh, early okay. Jim Lee in there and some right, early cool. um, some good yeah. stuff. But uh, I I'm excited to read X Factor mainly because that is the part where you know Archangel, you know, or sorry, Angel becomes Archangel, and one of my favorite X Men villains, Apocalypse, who also happens to be the latest Marvel Legends build a figure. Look how angry he is. It looks like Same. he needs only, to poop. Remember when they made that X Men movie with Apocalypse and it was terrible? I didn't see it, but but you guys kind of liked it, and I was confused. I okay, I liked that movie <laughs> because I finally got to see a young Jean and a young Scott, and I and and it felt like they were kids at a school who just happened to have these powers that could level the mountain. You know, I wasn't wild about Apocalypse looking like Ivan Ooze from the Power Rangers. Yeah, I just and the action was just a bunch of people hovering. That was it. Anyway, but that's what I've been doing. And I think based on Chandler's recommendation, I think I might start doing um, a one-man show of the arcs that I've read. Because I know you guys like my Spider-Man Carnage one-man show. That was pretty great. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> yeah. So I think maybe I'll, I'll, I'll uh, start doing more of those. Like, previously on Paul Reed's. Mm. <laughs> it's a good way I'm to down. get the summary of the story. And, like, Yeah, I'll read, I'll read the bad bits. comics for you. Cliff Notes. Yeah. Paul Notes. Mm. My name's not Cliff. No. And dum dum. <laughs> well, I would love to talk about what I've been into recently, but I can't because nobody's caught up. I'll take my earbuds Jay. Out. Oh, and Stefan. I don't, I'm going to watch it. Steven Universe? Yeah. Cause it's if it's been... on Hulu, I'll watch at least the first season by next episode. It's been so insane. Like, there is so much. They just released a huge Steven bomb. So many questions have been answered. I have new questions that I didn't have, like, two years ago. I'm, like, 
fucking losing it. It's so good, and I need to talk about it. And nobody watches it, so nobody knows. And I just... Ugh. I need to find somewhere I can stream it. Yeah. Is Hulu up to date, do you know, or is it... No. No, uh, but just watch all the Hulus. The Hulus. I'm so old. <laughs> And then um, I just like uh, YouTube the episodes. I mean, but I okay. mean, you can get the Cartoon Network app. YouTube. You can do that because uh, that's how the newest episode came on was through the Cartoon Network app. Um, but because Cartoon Network. Um, yeah, they did this. And now I don't know. We don't know when we're going to. That, that's the hardest thing about being a Steven Universe fan is that you get caught up and then you go like a year with nothing i mean at least yeah. with game of thrones there are like the books so there you can occupy yourself when there's like a huge hiatus and you know from like instagram photos and stuff if they're even filming <laughs> with steven yeah. universe you Let's have see. like no idea what's happening and what's coming and there's so much that you they're just making like a movie aren't they i i did hear that from paul yeah thank you for recognizing yeah. your source I yeah. <laughs> I always recognize my forces. Mm. The fuck. Paul heard it from the Associated Press over the wire. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, so, oh, guys, what a scoop! Paul I mean, I, ho uh, I hope. I recognize the sources, but Angela does. I hope that's not that how they they wrap up, Stephen, because I just want it forever. It's like the most right. wonderful show, and it puts me in such a happy space um, whenever I watch it. Um, that being said, though, I need more and I have a huge hiatus, so I need to talk about it. And yeah, I need to fucking talk about it, you guys. I need to watch Unbreakable. I need to watch Split. that other thing. Split. Split. What? Split. Split. And like and that other thing. What was the other thing? Steven Steven was was split, un Split and Unbreakable. Split Unbreakable. That's I it. thought there was one other thing that we had discussed. I'll have to redo or re listen to this episode, whatever. We need more <laughs> listenings anyway. Uh, well, there's a lot of great new shows on um, Netflix. I I did start watching one today. What was it? The um, Dark Dark Tourist or Dark Tourist? Oh yeah, whatever. the Dark Tourist. Yeah. Yeah, which is really interesting. Where a guy basically does all the dark touristy shit. Um, around the world he's, and he's from New Zealand which makes it really nice because I don't know there's something about tourist shows that feature like a white guy because then you're like oh you're going to all these foreign countries and you're just like the fucking white guy just being awful but he and especially because he's going to dark touristy things the fact that he's new, like from New Zealand and he's got like a nice sense of humor and he doesn't take himself like too seriously yeah. it's just the it, accent it, too. It, it's nice you're just like oh okay this doesn't feel offensive like right. I'm not offended watching you do this so so that's nice um, that's a good one I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I've been like obsessed with. Is there anything else um, that you've seen me doing that I'm like obsessed with? No, you, you were you were you were listening to some book though about Japan. That wasn't a book. Okay, so I don't know if you guys are fans of the Hardcore History podcast. Oh yeah. Okay. The Rise of so, Imperial Japan. I listened yes. to that part one. So good. Oh my god, it was so good. I'm so What's excited for the second part. So it's called Hardcore, Hardcore History. History, and it's Dan... Got it. Dan Carlin. Carlin. And he um, just talks about these like epic historical moments, but he hasn't really touched World War II, and we all kind of assumed that he didn't touch that topic because it's been so, ver so like, oversaturated. I said sober. Okay. Like? Like, it's been so oversaturated in World War II. Well, he did one... He did World War I. One of his first ones was about a battle in Russia against the Germans, but it was, like a, it was a very small pocket. I of thought World it was War when II. World War One. He the the last long one he did was about World War One. Okay. He's done a lot. Okay, so so do it, but he's doing this now from um, basically tackling World War Two, but from the perspective of Japan, which I think is amazing and. Yeah, he just did release part one of that like last week and I listened to it just I was like, oh, it's four hours. I don't know if I can can like do that, but I did. I was like mm -hmm. doing my hair and my makeup, listening to like <laughs> these horrible things, horrible things that were going on in the world <laughs> that they were doing in China. You're just like, oh, my God. Yeah. They haven't even touched Dan King yet. So I'm just I like, know. oh, Jesus. Every time I listen to his podcasts and 
I was like, thank God I live when I do now. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's freaking out about James Gunn making bad jokes, but back then, Japan was just like, oh, if we want to be cool, we got to conquer and murder people. And then when they do that, everybody's like, hello, Japan. Welcome to the big boy table. <laughs> basically, yeah. But the well, fact um, that, like, they basically came from, like, they basically jumped from, like, feudal Japan to the, like, modern era in, like, what, a span of ten years? It's, like, basically, insane. Basically, it's amazing. So, that, so, yeah, that's awesome. If you guys get a chance to listen to it, do, because it's great. I'm yeah. following him now. Hardcore uh, history is incredible. And I just started listening to one today called Whimsically Volatile. Mm. It's uh, a drag person, I think, named Katya. Oh, does, I love Katya! Yeah, yeah there's like 20 like, episodes. Do you remember Katya from I, Drag Race? I do, drag yeah, RuPaul's Drag Race is The awesome. Russian that's not really Russian? Oh, I yeah, love she's Katya, great. she's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so I just started listening to that. Apparently it has a whole bunch of topics, but the one I'm listening to is about like BDSM and uh, two like chicks that get paid to dominate dudes all around the world and stuff like that. Nice, nice. It's, huh. it's interesting so far. I, I started oh. listening to it at work and it was just like... I uh, like torturing cock and balls. And I was just like, I can't listen to this at work <laughs> immediately. There is something that I did forget, and I forgot, and I'm telling you about it now. So I had, I got really sick this week. There was this like weird stomach bug going around, and in one of my fever dreams in the middle of the day when I called out of work, I had a dream about the Spice Girls, and I <laughs> dreamed that they um, needed my help to bring. Uh, the Spice Girls, the music of the Spice Girls to the younger generations. So um, I was helping them do that. And then I woke up and I was like, what the fuck? So I hopped on YouTube and just went down the rabbit hole looking at all their old music videos and looking at clips from Spice World or from Spice World, the movie. And then Paul, the day ended with Paul. I was like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm trying to get a copy of Spice World. And I had to stop him. Because I was like, I, I appreciate that you care, but we should not do that. I saw Spice World in theaters. I bet you did. Rom has like a Spice World poster in his room. I have two sisters. And he's like, good night, sporty. <laughs> good night, baby. <laughs> good night, Ginger. And his being is like, what? <laughs> uh, she sounds a lot nicer than that. <laughs> and it's in German, so I don't know how you say what in German, but I don't imagine Was? it being... Huh? Was? 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 What is this? Was is that? I'm just going to stop it there. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. yeah um, so, yeah, the Spice Girls, I, I don't know. And I and there's been, like, in the rumor mill that I might go back on a reunion tour because I missed the first reunion tour, and I've been kicking myself for years for not just going. And I didn't, and I'm a fucking idiot. But if they ever do it again, I will be there. I'll be in the front row. And because I do, I miss them and I missed what they represented. So, yeah. Girl power. Girl power, guys. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't Bob H- Hoskins in that movie, the dude from Who Framed Roger Rabbit? <laughs> yeah. Is he like Meatloaf was in that movie? Meatloaf was the bus tour driver, bus driver. Yeah. I'd like to think he volunteered for that. I hope he's like, really he's really like, like, Should we didn't, close out this podcast before we go deep down the Spice World pals? <laughs> but didn't he? Do you see what they do to you? You see what they do to but you. But didn't he have a joke about <laughs> that he would do anything for love, but he won't do that? Yeah. Yeah. Knew it. He did. Um, but in the meantime, you all know the drill. We're on Instagram. <laughs> we're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're on, Rob, where the hell are we on right now? Twitcher? Stitcher? Tw- Pitcher? <laughs> Flickr? Twitch.tv, Paul. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, Switch.tv. <laughs> Grandpa. You can see what we <laughs> What are these Twitch.tv kids with the, with slash Wednesday comic podcast. Um, yeah, so yeah, you can see what we look like in case you wanted to know, which I'm sure all two of you did. Yeah. Um, also, Unfortunately, please... we have no good streaming schedule, so... Mm-hmm. It's just making Maybe it as we go. But, follow us uh, and jo- you'll get notifications. Jo- but we do have a very special listener right now, and I want to give her a shout out. It's my mom. Hi, Sandy. Hi, mom. Hi. I thought you were making jokes about that this whole time. No. No, <laughs> no Sandy's awesome. So when my mom texted me during listen, that's when you were like, oh, dominating cock and balls. I'm like, oh, great. This is a good time Whoops. for my mom to tune in. <laughs> She's a very sweet lady. <laughs> 
Oh god, that is so red now. <laughs> All right, but holy for shit! Real, this is a long ass <laughs> podcast. <laughs> All right, kids, have a great night and enjoy your issues. Thank you. Bye. Bye.